Hello everyone, we will talk about a hypothesis test for a population mean when we have a small sample. So we have a population and we want to test if mu meet a certain claim, but because of some constraint, we can take only a small population. So n is less than 30 data point. The test is exactly the same as we did before for a large sample. But for a large sample, we use the z-score. For a small samples, we will be using the t-score. So the same step, let x1, xn, these are the data point in this sample from a normal population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So when we have a large sample, we don't require the population to be normal because n is large and x bar, according to the central limit theorem, will have a normal population, even if the probability distribution is not normal but x bar will have if we have a large sample. Since we have here a small sample, then this is a condition must be met. And we don't know the standard deviation. To test a null hypothesis, either mu is less than a given value, mu zero, or larger, or equal, we compute the test statistic, the t. And if, for example, mu zero here, and t came right here, then the null hypothesis mu is less than or equal to mu naught. And the sample show here, x bar, after we do the transformation it become t, show some evidence actually x bar is larger than mu naught, and we have to calculate this p-value. If p-value is less than 5%, then we reject the null hypothesis. And that is the hypothesis test for the mean of a small sample. So let's take an example to demonstrate this. But before we take the example, just a reminder, if the alternative hypothesis mu of the population here larger than mu naught and we take a sample here and that's x bar if x bar came here then that's the p-value we will be measuring to the right of t x bar is the same as t when we do the transformation for this case if this is a mu zero and the alternative hypothesis mu is less than mu zero, so the sample mean is somewhere here, then this is the p-value, is the area to the left of t. And for this case, if this is mu naught, and the alternative hypothesis that the mean here does not equal mu naught. So the sample either will show it here, or it may show it here doesn't matter. So since H1 is not, then the null hypothesis will be mu equal mu naught. So then the two-sided will contribute to the p-value. So let's take this example to demonstrate the steps for the hypothesis test for the mean of a small sample. Before a substance can be deemed safe for landfilling, its chemical property must be characterized. An article report that in a sample of six replicates of a sludge from a New Hampshire wastewater treatment plant, the mean pH was 6.68 with a standard deviation 0.2. Can we conclude that the mean pH is less than 7? So we have here a sludge that we can use if the mean is less than 7. So they said took a sample n equals 6 from a New Hampshire wastewater treatment plant and they found the mean pH content equals 6.68 with a standard deviation of the sample s equal 0.2. So that is what they want. The mean here is 7, and anything less than 7, they will use it. The sample mean come less than 7, so that's 6.68. So we're going to choose our null hypothesis to oppose the evidence. So we will say mu actually is equal or larger than 7. That's our null hypothesis. The HP of the Hampshire wastewater treatment. And the alternative hypothesis h1 will be mu is less than 7 and the p-value will be to the left here that's the p-value we have to calculate so the first step we have to calculate the test statistic t equal x bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation of x bar 
So that is 6.68 minus 7 divided by s. This is the same as s over the square root of n. So that will be 0.2 divided by the square root of 6. And if you calculate this, you should get minus 3.919. So we use the t table. And here we have minus 3.919 or we look at the value of p-value from the table, and we should find it to be 0.005. So there is a strong evidence at 0.5% level to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis, that the sludge is safe for landfilling, coming from the New Hampshire Wastewater Treatment Plant. The next topic is large sample test hypothesis tests for the difference between two means so now we have two population actually x and another population y and this x has mu x and the standard deviation of x and this population mu y and the standard deviation of y so now we want to carry out a hypothesis test to find the difference between mu x and mu y which equal, let's call it delta zero, where delta zero could be zero, that means there is no difference between them and mu x equal mu y, or delta zero could be a negative value or a positive value, which means either mu x larger than mu y or mu x smaller than mu y. And we want to carry this type of hypothesis test. And to carry out these tests, we will be following this procedure. So let's first draw the two population we have here, x and y. And we take a sample first with a size nx. And there will be here x1, x2, all the way to xn. And then we take another sample from this population with size ny. And here we will have y1, y2, all the way to yn. Now here we are assuming these two population are independent. So these samples here are independent. Then if I want to test the difference between mu x and mu y, I will find the sample mean here x bar and the sample mean here y bar, and I want to carry this. So then I will calculate the z-score test because the population here nx and ny larger than 30. So then I will use the z-score. And my random variable now is mu x minus mu y less than delta zero divided by the standard deviation of mu x minus mu y which is the same as the standard deviation of x bar minus y bar which is the same as the variance of s x divided by n x plus the variance of the sample y, s y squared divided by n y. Here I am assuming I don't know what's the variance of x here and the variance of y. So I will use s x, the standard deviation of this sample, and the standard deviation of s y to estimate these two. Then the standard deviation of x bar is just these divided by square root of n, and the standard deviation of y bar is just these divided by the square root of n, and we have shown it in previous lectures. Okay, so let me just clean it up. Z equal, and this is this one. Now, how do we decide the null hypothesis? We will use this technique here. I will look at this is delta zero. I will look at this sample, mu x minus mu y, that will be x bar, and mu y will be y bar. So I am estimating this by x bar minus y bar. So I'm gonna go look where is x bar minus y bar. If it came here less than delta zero, then the p-value will be to the left, and this will be my h1 the alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis will be the mean of x minus the mean of y larger than delta zero if the sample x bar minus y bar came here so that is larger than delta zero 
then my alternative hypothesis h1 will be mu x minus mu y larger than delta 0 and the p-value will be to the right and that will be this case and the null hypothesis will be mu x minus mu y less than or equal delta 0. The third possibility that mu x minus mu y equals 0. No difference. That's my null hypothesis. Then the alternative hypothesis will be h1 mu x minus mu y does not equal 0. That means there is a difference. It could be more, mu x more than mu y, or smaller. And the sample x bar minus y bar may come here, or it may come here. So the p-value, then, if, if it comes less than 0, then the p-value will be the contribution of the two sides for this hypothesis. Okay, let's take an example. A production manager for a manufacturer of industrial machinery is concerned that balls bearing produced in an environment with low ambient temperature may have smaller diameters than those produced under higher temperature. So we have actually two population here. This is one and this is another one. Let's call this X cold temperature or morning and Y hot temperature of the factory or afternoon. She sampled 120 ball bearing that were manufactured early in the morning before the shop was fully heated and find their mean diameter to be nx equal 120 and she found their mean diameter to be 5.068 so that x bar 5.068 and their standard deviation sx equal 0.011 millimeter she independently samples 65 ball bearing manufactured during the afternoon so in the afternoon here she took ny 65 and she found the mean diameter to be 5.072. So Y bar equal 5.072 millimeter and their standard deviation to be 0 0.007 millimeter. Can she conclude that ball bearing manufactured in the morning have a smaller diameter on average than ball bearing manufactured in the afternoon? Before we decide what's the null hypothesis, let's just plot the standard normal distribution because our random variable is x bar minus y bar and these if you call this random variable a it will have a normal distribution since x bar has a normal distribution and y bar has a normal distribution so a will have and we want to know if x is smaller than y so let's assume there is no difference between them so let's choose this delta zero to be zero and let's see what the sample tell us. X bar minus Y bar equal 5.068 minus 5.072. So this is minus 0.004. So here is the sample. So it's less than delta. So automatically now I can say the null hypothesis is the following. There is no difference or even more. That means now I will assume my null hypothesis H0 opposing the evidence of the sample that X bar minus Y bar equal or larger than zero. She claimed that X bar she think is less. So we're going to go the null hypothesis either equal or more. And the alternative hypothesis will be what she thinks that X bar is smaller than Y bar. All right. So now we're going to calculate the test statistic, which is the z-score, since the sample is large. So that will be x bar. So we're going to be calculating this. So this will be x bar minus y bar. x bar is 5.068 minus y bar 5.072 minus delta 0, which is 0, divided by square root, the variance of x bar which is sx square 0 0.011 square divided by nx which is 120 plus the variance of y bar which is sy square 0 0.007 divided by ny which is 65 and if we calculate these 
this will be minus 3.013 and if we look into the z table standard normal distribution that z is the normalization of this quantity which is here minus 3.013 this quantity minus 0 0.04 is here and the p-value will be to the right this area and if we look at the table this area will be 0.0013 so that is 0.13 percent which is way less than five percent so there is a strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference and the morning will be even larger than the ball bearing in the afternoon so there is strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis and accept her claim or her worry that the ball bearing produced at low temperature in the morning has a smaller diameter now probably she need to buy air condition for the afternoon okay let's look at another example 6b an article compares property of welds made using carbon dioxide as a shielding gas with those of weld made using a mixture of ergon and carbon dioxide let's plot this is the first population this is the second population this population let's call it x carbon dioxide plus oregon and y just carbon dioxide a sample of 544 inclusion in welds made using ergon shielding average 0.37 micrometer in diameter with a standard deviation of 0.25 micrometer so they took here a sample with nx equal 544 and they found x bar equal 0.37 micrometer and s x is 0.25 micrometer a sample of 581 inclusion in welds made using carbon dioxide shielding average 0.4 with a standard deviation 0.26 so then ny here is 581 y bar of the sample is 0.4 with a standard deviation sy 0.26 micrometer can you conclude that the mean diameter of inclusion differ between the two shielding gases well from the sample there is a difference between them they are not the same so i will choose my null hypothesis no they are both the same equal zero and the alternative hypothesis h1 will be mu x minus mu y does not equal zero that's what the evidence show maybe small difference but at least they don't seem so always the alternative hypothesis will agree with the evidence provided by the sample the null hypothesis always go the other way of what the sample shows okay so since the sample is very large we're going to use the z score so z equal x bar minus y bar so that is 0.37 minus 0.4 micrometer minus delta zero which is zero divided by the standard deviation of x bar minus y bar which will be the variance of x so that is 0.25 squared divided by nx which is 544 plus the variance of y which is 0.26 squared divided by ny 581 and if we calculate this it should be minus 0.03 divided by 0.0152 so that is minus 1.97 since our null hypothesis either equal or not equal then that would be two-sided p-value so that is zero here minus 1.97 is here 1.97 is here because the null hypothesis is either equal alternative they are not equal they could be smaller or bigger it doesn't matter it's just they're not equal so now we're gonna have to calculate these and these and this would be the same area so from the standard normal distribution table this p value came 0.0244 this is alpha over 2 
and this is 0 0.0244 so the p-value equal 0 0.0244 plus 0 0.0244 this is 0 0.0488 so that is 4.88 percent barely below the five percent so we reject the null hypothesis there is enough evidence to reject null hypothesis at 4.88 percent significant level so there is a difference between welding with carbon dioxide plus organ versus just carbon dioxide alone okay this conclude section 6.5 which is building a hypothesis test for the difference between the two means of two different population our next topic will be tests for the difference between two proportions thank you for watching